Hi, Judy from Witch Peace Craft. Welcome. Well, it's early Sunday morning. I got woken up early by my neighbours and their children. Obviously leaving off on a big day trip, but because it was so early, the children were arguing and getting quite loud and set my dog off. But that happens. They're just kids and they're off for a day trip. The house is really quiet, so I thought I'd do a bit of an off-the-cuff video, hence the natural moisturised Sunday morning look. Um, I haven't done many videos, I lost my YouTube mojo, um, I might explain at the end if you're interested, but I thought I'd get on with the video. This one today is about the stuff I've been making for next week's um, Christmas market, which I hope to raise a bit of funds for charity. And there's a few people I'd like to thank. I've got real, no real notes, so I'm going to wing it. I have the happy mail, and I think we'll just go along as we go. So let's get started. I received some happy mail from Barbara, which was all Christmas wrapped. And Reeb said, no, you can't open it till Christmas Day. Well, no, Barbara said I could. And I'm being a bit flat, so last night I opened a couple. And the first one we opened, which of course, Reeves and Thing can smell food from five miles away, was this one. They, we shared these coconut patties. And on the note, it says, made in Orlando, enjoy. Barbara, we did. They are really nice. Um, Thing doesn't really have a sweet tooth, but he said these weren't overly sweet. And for a while there, Reeves was trying to remember what they reminded him of and then he did late remember we have a Daryl Lee chocolate factory that makes Christmas nougat puddings and when the boys were smaller I used to always put one in their stocking um, I think he was hinting he'd like one this year because he really enjoyed having these and yes they were lovely and really thoughtful I then opened this one because I was curious I was so over the moon to receive this because I've seen them in her Etsy shop. Now look, I'll list Etsy shop patterns, everything in the description below so you can check it out. I have something similar in like a bracelet form that Julia gave me years ago, but I've seen these and thought, oh, wouldn't they be awesome? So here you go. Came in this lovely little pouch. It's a row counter or stitch counter whichever way you want to use it it's not beautiful all these stones and beads and oh just great workmanship now this is made by Marianne the crochet clogger she has an Etsy shop she also has a YouTube channel and I've seen her show these quite a bit she's in the States and uh, I thought one would be nice but I've sort of bought it getting them all this way and lo and behold someone must have been dialing into my thoughts Barbara you, this is really lovely I really do like it and I think Marianne does a great um, job she calls it an Akabus row counter now the old Akabus I've used to use one actually when I was quite young so there you go I really love it and it goes in this lovely little pouch there's her note. So that was the two I opened last night and I thought I'd open some today with you. So this feels soft like yarn. Shall we open it and have a look? Sorry if you've got earbuds and the crinkling gets to you. 24-7 cotton lion brand. This is so hard to get here. Never have I seen this colour. This colour is creamsicle like it's like a creamed orange glaze I love this cotton and it is hard to get up here I don't know about the southern states but that is so thoughtful I love that sorry it's getting towards Christmas tourist season so there'll be a lot of plane noise overhead just going to throw the paper down there this one feels like a book we see what this one is. I'll try to limit the crackling. <laughs> I just saw the title. 
polar bear notebook. <laughs> that is awesome. This is going to be my planner for 2024. I have a day book where I write notes. I have lots of books. But I was thinking last night, I need a planner for 24 and be more um, organised. And everybody who's been following me for a while will know my first love is polar bears. Isn't that gorgeous? It has like recipe ingredients notes. So I could just use it as my planner for everything. Like if I'm crocheting. And there's a note from Barbara in the front. This notebook said it was just that a, that a notebook. But it looks like it's really a recipe book. But I love the, the bears. Thought of you. Hope you can still use it for your notes. Look. Sometimes a project is a recipe. It's an idea of um, the pattern and the ingredients of the yarn colours and the utensils of the needles or crochet hook. So whether it's a recipe book or not, I still love it. And I think I'm going to use it totally for my yarn planning in 2024. Because I've got like Word documents everywhere on my laptop putting ideas together for 2024. Trying to get my YouTube mojo back. Thank you, Barbara. That is so me, polar bears. And then this one, the big one from Barbara. Feels like yarn. Sorry, guys. Oh, a yarn bee. Soft and sleek. I don't think I've ever had yarn bee yarn. I have to feel it. Oh, it's so soft. And of course, in my favourite colour. Yarn be soft and sleek. DK. Yes, I'm a DK girl. Low pill fibre. Oh, this is gorgeous. Oh, it's beautiful. This is so soft you could use it on a baby blanket. 4mm knitting needles, 4.5mm crochet hook. Just has pumpkin paradise is the colour. And I'm trying to see if it has any 478 yards per ball. Wow, there's plenty there to make it a lovely big project. I really do like that. Pumpkin paradise. So that was my Christmas happy mail from Barbara. I'm having a little Christmas pity party and opening a few presents to make myself feel better. And that certainly did. Thank you, Barbara. You're just so thoughtful. I don't generally send what I call Christmas gifts out. I'll send end of year gifts out for people, um, subscribers, podcasters. I've been really loyal to the channel. I even send overseas. And um, I had a thought last night to give people more. I was looking at Ravelry wish lists. So if you're on Ravelry, and you have some patterns you like, put them in a wish list. I have sent some patterns to people via their wish list of end of year gifts. Now I notice one of the um, podcasters also lists Etsy patterns in her Ravelry wish list. So have a look at doing that. I'm not sure how you do that, but you never know. You might find me sending you a pattern as a thank you gift for end of year. Just a little small thank you. So, moving right along, the market. Well, I sort of avoided YouTube and thought I'll just focus on making stuff for the market because my last market was such a success and I sold so many different things and I needed to restock and be inspired and talking to Ulia, I was inspired. Um, of course, I've been making tea towel toppers because they did. I did sell 24 of them. And I need to make at least at least have 24, which I think I'm at, maybe a few more. And I do also do them as Christmas gifts um, for different people. And Emma's mum, Doreen, said, could her Christmas gift be some tea towels with tea towel toppers? Because she really loves them. And um, I gave them to her last year, but she wants more. So I have to make some of those for Doreen. I have to come up with something nice for Emma. She's a teenager now. I thought 
I might get her some really nice Christmas earrings. She loves Christmas, Emma. So yes, I've been making tea towel toppers. I've also had a lot of queries about how I do them. And one of the things I've made notes on is maybe I'll do a demonstration video in 2024 on how I do my tea towel toppers. I've thought about it. It's not, can't really be a tutorial because a lot of it could be fudging depending on your tea towel. But let me know what you think. Um, would you be interested in seeing a demonstration video on how I do my tea towel toppers for different size tea towels and different shapes as in how you fold them? Let me know in the comments below. So I've been getting back into amigurumi and the amigurumi sold really well on my charity store and I thought I would make some amigurumis. So first off the rank is, and I'll move that one. I've made this before in DK weight with a different pattern, but then I decided I'd try another designer who uses like a, um, well DK's 8 ply, I'm never quite sure if, well this is Red Heart Super Saver, so it's a 4 weight, this is all Red Heart Super Saver, and I used a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook by the pattern, I did everything to the pattern except one thing. I made a hungry pack, two things, I just realised. I made the Hungry Caterpillar. It's a free pattern on Ravelry, as I said, it'll be listed in the description below. I didn't do the hairy back, and I'll show you mine. Da -da, because, look how long this caterpillar is. Da -da. I didn't, oh, three things I didn't do. His antenna are flopping because I've had him stuffed away somewhere. I didn't do felt eyes, I crocheted my own eyes and it actually has one more bobble, it's supposed to have one more bobble but he actually looked, as Reeb said, he really looks long enough and to end on a light colour not a dark colour and I took Reeb's advice. So there's my hungry caterpillar that I'll sell on my market store. I know my little um, Eight ply was really quite small and very popular. Like I had two ladies debating which one would be, buy it first and um, who deserved it more. So I've made a bigger one. Isn't he cute? I really like him. And the pattern is the Hungry Caterpillar by Brittany's Boutique. She does have a website and she a couple of websites, Brittany'sBoutique.com and Brittany'sOffTheHook.com. So there you have it. The Hungry Caterpillar. That was my first thing. It's relatively easy to make. Like I could make one of the balls in my lunch hour and then just put it all together and finish it off. I then, because I watch people who are doing market stalls, I've been watching to be like getting new ideas and be inspired. I've been watching Elaine from Penguin Place quite a bit. Hello Elaine. And she does a lot of amigurumis um, for her markets and she does regular markets. So, and she has some free patterns on her blog site and I thought, I'm going to try these. So, where's my favourite? I don't really have a favourite. She makes, I've got this in the box because I made a few coffee cups. I put coffee in them. So he's got a sad face. She's got a happy face. This is like a bit of a bare one. And then this one, not quite sure, he's just sleepy. I put them on key rings because I'm going to sell them as bag buddies. Won't be a moment. Sorry, I've got the sneezes. It's really hot outside. I've got the air con on at 8 in the morning, which is unheard of. Um, it's probably like 95% humidity, humidity in it at about 35 degrees already. We should get rain today, tonight, if not tomorrow. It is wet season. So I made four coffee cups. Oh, big long hair of mine there. Hmm. Then, I'm, then I'm using up scrap yarn from my stock and stash, which is a really good idea. So they're the bag, and I thought bag buddies sold quite well, which is unusual. I couldn't sell them at the other market. 
and I used the dabbling hooks demonstration on her little octos and I made some octos. I don't know whether to give him a face or not. Let me know in the comments. Should the purple octo have a mouth or should I just leave him blank? And then I used the same thing, except I put longer treadles and used, and made it this one. And he's got a full-on face. All scrap yarn, all left over from different projects, including my Hungry Caterpillar. I did make the extra ball. And I haven't put him on a key ring yet, but I decided I'd make him into a bit of a weird octo and put him on a key ring. And selling because I'd already made it and stuffed it when Reeve said it's going to be too long. So there you go. They're the little um, Amagurumi bag buddies. This week I'm going to make some more leggy froggies. Um, they were quite popular. So to Elaine for her coffee cup free tutorial on the blog site. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed it. I don't know. I'm addicted to making coffee cups. I've always liked Rella the dabbling hook, her little octos, even her big octos, which I'm going to show you shortly. So this box will have some more little amigurumis in it this week, probably for leggy froggies because I need to make a few of those. Um, where to now? Oh yes, Elaine from the um, Penguin Place Crafts. She also has on her blog website a free uh, pattern of Dino the Dinosaur. And I did get asked at my last market if there were more boy toys. I didn't have very many boy type toys. And she said there's not many. The lady that spoke to me said there's not many at the market. So everything seems to be focused on girls. So I decided I would try Elaine's Dino the Dinosaur. And he turned out really well. He actually does stand up, no problem. He will, look at that, Ta -da, the tail balances him. And at first I thought when I did him, they're going to say it's a dragon. But as soon as Reeves walked in, he said, oh, I like your Stegosaurus. So there you go. My only issue is the only eyes I had were like these black ones with green around. And I'm wondering if I should give him some eyebrows or is that's his nostrils and mouth or something to lift his face let me know what you think but that's my little amigurumi and i definitely would make another one of these um elaine thank you once again this is awesome for my market to sell i'm going to stand in there look at that how perfect is that to stand up so that's basically what i've been making for the markets so now if you were followed the update of my last market, you would know that I got some orders in. And one of the orders was for a baby toy. I had a, I think it's a minion one, and she said I'd want one in pink, and I'd want this sort of look and that sort of look. Look, I have made one. I'm not sure it's exactly her, and I may make another one. She's just had the baby, so I have to email her, and she'll be coming down to the market to have a look. They will sell whether then um, she buys them or not. Um, I didn't take money off her because she had quite set ideas of what she wanted. And um, I call them pram buggy buddies. There you go. It's Octo. So this is the dabbling hook Octo 2. This is a paid for pattern. And instead of doing the legs the way she has them, I did the long tentacles like the lady wanted. Um, she had a set idea of what pink she wanted. And because it was a baby, I did my own eyes. But I will make a second one and I probably will put um, artificial eyes. You know, the bead things in. I was just concerned it's a baby. Although when I put eyes in a baby's toy, now I can't think who told me the tip. It's on YouTube. I cut a bit of like... Um, wadding out and put it on the back on the inside then put the back on and it makes it really tight and they don't come out so there you have it that is tdd do two the dabbling hook two octo with a variation to his or her legs and it's a pram buddy i put a big ring on it so you can she wanted it to hang 
near the car seat or on the pram. So I've done these rings, but I've also done this in case she wants to put a bigger ring or whoever buys it. But that was sort of an order, but I didn't take money for. The other one, which was the first order to come in, was the lady who collects tea cozies. I don't know if I've got the pattern here. I may not. Oh, yes, I did. So this is a pattern I showed on Free Pattern Friday, and it was one of the patterns she picked. Unfortunately, I've only printed it in black and white. And I wasn't keen to make it at first. There it is. It's Frankie's Knitted Stuff Christmas Tea Cozy. She wanted the one with the snowman. She wants another one, which I've got to start this week. She wasn't fussed. She said she'll wait all year if she has to, to get these two tea cozies. So here's my version of Frankie's Christmas Tea Cozy. Ta-da! So I actually sewed on the bobbles. The bobbles he tells you to make are quite time consuming and they look really funny. And the other thing I changed was the black hat didn't stand out. Like Reeves said, you don't really notice it. So I made a red hat. But that is her first tea cozy order. I've sent a picture of and she loves it. This one is 90% pure wool. I used... I haven't got the ball band. The navy blue is vintage pure wool from the Australian country cottage something. It, it is now the Wangaratta Knitting Mills. It was the Wangaratta Knitting Mills and then it was this Australian cottage something and then it went back to being the Wangaratta Knitting Mills. And this is from wool from the 80s. It's pure wool. It's lovely wool and it was so easy to work with. In here, it's acrylic with some mohair, vintage mohair to give him a fluffy feel. You don't really notice it there. I'm not sure if you can, but yes. And the red is Red Heart Super Saver acrylic. And yeah, and these are just shop bought balls, all individually hand sewn on. So that's her tea cozy. He turned out better than I thought. I still don't. Oh, I gave him a nose too. The pattern didn't have a nose. I'm still not sure I like it as a Christmas tea cozy, but she's wrapped in it and that's what she wanted. So that was one of the orders done. I have made a wrap for the lady and I've also about to finish a second one and she can have a choice because I know I will sell them. The first one I made, it's being blocked and I thought thought there was too much white in it because she wanted predominantly black and then I found this other yarn I had which is grey and black and I decided to make a second one I've just got to put the border row on and block it and it's finished so I'll show you that in another video what else have I got back here oh I scored big time from one of my bosses so one of my bosses retired at the end of November officially and he closed his office he's in the same building as me and got rid of a lot of stuff he donated a lot of um, paper and stationery and file, ring binder files to the charity I work for which is really great because that keeps the administration costs down but for me he gave me something he thought would be really ideal for my markets he gave me a cash tin look at this this was his secretary's petty cash tin now I generally just use a Tupperware or container but he gave me this he said you can use that for your markets you know different charities you collect for and yeah what a score these aren't cheap and I've got a cash tin for the markets no register and I've got FPOS but yeah it's also also nice because we had the big fiber failure of network that um, a lot of people started to use cash again because they don't trust the tap and go and um, there are lots of signs around town cash is king don't lose it use it so yeah that was my big score of the week that was really nice of him to think of me he also gave me his Nespresso coffee machine for my office he said you know you get visitors 
you can make them nice coffee. I had room for it, which was awesome. So yeah, very generous of him and um, I wish him well in retirement. He reckons he's going to come in once a week for coffee and um, I said to tell him to ring me first and I'll make sure I'm not there. <laughs> no, he goes, oh, I'm very cheeky, you're very cheeky. But no, he is fun and we talk about our travelling adventures quite a bit. He and his wife travel and she's a quilter. I should remember next video to show you the Christmas decorations she made me next year, last year on her sewing machine. It was amazing. I forgot, I don't think I showed it last year because I got it quite late and I was, forgot all about it. Anyway, guys, that's all I have to share with you for this week. I guess the week that was. Um, as far as YouTube mojo, if you're not interested in why I lost my mojo, thank you for stopping by um, and I hope you enjoy the content. I will be back in a few days to launch my 2024 make along which I'm going to do again with a new theme and a bit of a twist most of the rules and prizes will be the same and it will run for six months so keep an eye out for that video and let's hope we get more people involved in the make along YouTube Mojo I can't remember if it's four or five years I've been doing this I'll have a look because my anniversary is in January and um, they encourage you to look at your analytics, which I did, which was a mistake. Because I just plod along doing my thing and thinking, you know, certain things. And when I really check my analytics, and because I'm a bookkeeper and a maths person figures, I really became disheartened because what I thought was happening wasn't and what I didn't think was happening was. And um, it was very disheartening because um, you watch a lot of channels, you get inspiration, and it's not just the negative comments everybody gets, and you just have to block and delete and put those aside, but the actual overall viewing of your channel, the watch hours, who watches you, watch age group. Um, I had preconceived ideas, and I sort of hit rock bottom and thought, I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm obviously... Um, not doing something right and have to rethink it. I do enjoy doing the videos. I do really enjoy getting the feedback and comments. I have a good laugh. I feel sad sometimes um, at what's happening in people's lives. And I've made some really good yarny friends on YouTube. So it's not all negative. This time of year is difficult for me. The 12th of December is the anniversary of my mother's death. She, for those who have been around for a while, will know she was killed by a drunk driver. So Christmas has never really been great for us. It doesn't matter how long ago it was, because mum was the centre of our Christmas. Not just growing up, but as adults with a grandchildren, even my sons say, it's never been the same since we lost her. And I know that I have to focus on the positive, because there are a lot of people out there who've had a lot worse things happen during the festive season and are going through a lot worse things than me. So I made the video today and opened Barbara's presents to make me smile and happy and get motivated. I'm really looking forward to making the leggy froggy and finishing off the two shawls and I am really enjoying my advent knitting project. It's looking good and I will either post some pictures on Instagram or show you again in the video. But I won't be doing admin openings every day like other channels. There's just too much out there at the moment. Anyway, guys, let me know your comments about Dino the dinosaur. Does he need a bit more facial features to brighten him up? Maybe some grey eyebrows. Um, what else did I ask you? I can't remember. I didn't take notes. But rest assured, all the patterns... The tutorials, the people I've mentioned in the channel will be in the description below. And make sure if you're looking for a little gift like Dino the Dinosaur, you check out Elaine's blog because she does some amazing little free patterns on there. I think he's very cute and I'm really impressed that he just stands up. Half the time my amigurumis fall over. So until next time, stay safe, stay well and enjoy making some Christmas projects and the build-up to your Christmas Day. Um, 
I don't know when I'll be back. I am working on my make along video. I've got all the notes and yes, there is a twist to it. So make sure you watch the video when it comes out and consider joining the make along. Bye for now.